Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to talk about Stillman and Burn. They are a paper company. Now, unfortunately, their history, um, there aren't a lot of pages all around the internet about it, so the only thing I could find was the little blurb that's on their direct webpage. So Stillman and Burn is a company that was founded in 1958 by Philip Burn. He was a Viennese bookbinder, and he brought his skill set to a small plant in Manhattan, New York, which is located in the United States. And it was there he worked on the black hardbound sketchbook. Um, he passed away in 2004 at the age of 93. And in 2019, Claire Fontaine acquired Stillman and Burn, and you can see that on this packaging. Now, Flair. Claire Fontaine is a French stationery company founded in 1858, and they've also acquired um, other stationery brands like Rhodia. And if you would like to read more about them and their history, I will link that in the description box below. But Stillman and Burn is distributed by Exaclair Inc., which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Claire Fontaine. And because Exaclair is located in New York, and the paper is manufactured in New York, Stillman and Byrne are able to maintain environmental impacts that are minimized. So it's pretty efficient. So this is the packaging that is around the product when you buy them. This is the soft bound. The soft bound are in different colors. The hard bound and the spiral bound are all black. So the color system is to sort of the soft bound. Now the blue I have is the beta. And you can see that there are three products that are 270 grams. I will link a video why you want to do grams over pounds when looking at paper. And so this is the cold press, which means it is the texturized 270 gram. That's white paper. They have a hot press that's white paper. And they have a 270 gram cold press textured that is ivory paper. Now they also have a 150 gram, which is the alpha, the epsilon, and the gamma. And those range from medium grain in white to smooth grain in white and medium grain in ivory. And medium grain just means it has texture. They have Nova paper here which comes in sort of toned color packs that have black and gray and beige. They also have on their webpage that isn't highlighted on here, they have loose leaf five sheet individual packs and those are 22 by 30 inches or 55.9 by 72.2 centimeters. So that is their whole product line. It is paper. Um, so we're gonna talk about this a little bit. Their webpage is kind of, um, here is the thick paper. I did watercolor and ink. I did watercolor and ink on both sides. Again, this is the 270 gram. It is very thick. So doing watercolor and ink on both sides isn't an issue. There was no bleeding. There was no problem with this. I used um, M. Graham and Daniel Smith watercolors and Micron. But I have another one of their sketchbooks. This is the Epsilon. And even though it looks gray in the fold out, it's, or teal, it's actually gray. And it kind of reminds me of animal fur. I really like this shade of gray. And I thought we would paper test their thinner 150 pound and see how well it handles stuff. Now that it's all stitch bound and it opens flat, um, you have to wiggle some of it, but let's see. So I wanted to test a Copic and see if there is, there is ghosting. Um, it's starting to bleed just a scotch of one stroke. So if you did two with the Copic, you would start to notice that there is a little bit of bleeding coming through. So be very, very careful with your Copic. Maybe have a sheet guard. I'm using a piece of watercolor paper to make sure it doesn't come through the other side. Here's a Tombow in brown. I really love Tombows and I love the color brown. So as you can see, um, there is very faint ghosting, but there is no bleeding. And I typically only create on one side of the page anyway, if I can get away with it. 
Um, here is a fine Sharpie. Again, this is brown. I'm going to overlap Sharpie. We're going to see if anything comes through. Their webpage features a gallery. So there's a little bit of ghosting with the Sharpie. So if you click on the paper option of your choice, let's say you click on beta paper, you will get a gallery of creations on that paper from different artists. The same as if you click on Alpha or you click on Epsilon or any of the other names. I'm gonna try a little Winsor Newton Cotman. I wanna see how this performs and acts with watercolor. So I am going to use a little bit of burnt sienna right here. And we're gonna see light washes and then I wanna do some heavy stuff and see if that bleeds through. I wanna see how durable this paper is to wet media. Um, currently, as of now, which is August 3rd, 2022, their blog on their webpage is not up and running. So I don't know if that's something they are working on or going to be working on. I did notice sometimes I remember to tag or hashtag the companies of the papers I'm using when I'm doing creator challenges. And Stillman and Burn liked all my stuff on Instagram and they're the first company, paper company, to do that. So that's kind of cool. Let's see what this looks like on the other side. And I realize this is still a bit wet. This paper is, it's thinner. But it's nice. It seems to be really high quality. The other thing I wanted to test was a drawing ink for wet media. So here's a little Winsor Newton in cobalt. Again, this one is not light fast. Most of their color drawing inks aren't. So this would be great for print reproduction projects or just doodling around in sketchbooks. And I'm gonna take a little bit of this guy. And that was a lot of that guy. So I imagine leaving things pooled could prop possibly lead to a little bit of bleeding and ghosting just because this is not mixed media paper or watercolor paper. I just wanted to show you that if you were doing washes and you had like proper heat or a drying element, you would be fine with this lighter weight paper. Let me show you. I realize that's off screen here. There's a little bit of buckle, but that's because there's water sitting there. So to be fair, this, this paper is really nice for the thin weight that it is. And again, this is the Epsilon at 150 grams. This is the smooth surface. So, in the beta, in the thick, the thicker paper ones, there's only 26 pages. The Epsilon has 46 pages. So keep that in mind when purchasing. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helped in some way. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.